I would tend to say, and I'm, I'm probably going to get in trouble for this, um, that both these things, quantum computing and AI, are not as advanced as we make it appear to be. Okay? Okay. Certainly in the case of quantum computing. Uh, and, um, and that true what we call artificial, I don't like the terminology artificial intelligence because I don't think of intelligence as artificial in any case. So meaning that like if we, uh, if we succeed in putting intelligence in a technology, um, we will have reproduced something that's similar to us, you know, meaning we're like, a technology, physical thing that has intelligence, right? That's able to have creative thoughts and all this stuff. And I think that what we have is a really good feedback mechanism for a machine learning experience. And I think, so I, I'd rather think of it that way. I don't think that this is truly intelligence, what we have. We, we have a machine that um, is able to rectify errors that it's making, right? And, and able to learn about, you know, um, uh, the information that it's utilizing. Uh, but uh, before the machine start becoming truly creative, uh, I think we're going to have to make the machine something vastly different. So it might more look like a plasma uh, device that has feedback, you know, and that is able to like actually interact with the structure of the vacuum. And that's where truly will make a being that's connected, just like we are connected, you know, and um, that will be like artificial intelligence at that point. But I think that machine learning as we have it today, uh, what we call artificial intelligence as we have today or machine learning uh, is gonna help society fundamentally in the next few decades. It's gonna advance us, you know, exponentially. Uh, I can see it in physics even, you know, I you know, um, the latest versions of, of uh, chat GPT, you know, like the three version was making, like you couldn't do any physics with it. You couldn't do any math with it. It was making like massive errors. Like it was, it looked good, but then you start <laughs> looking at it and you go, whoa, this is not possible. And then, so, so it was, uh, but now it's actually quite good and and it's kind of nice when you put my paper in it and it you know it gives its opinion it's quite correct and so on and and so it's nice uh and it's gonna help us move forward because we can actually now render much more information much more rapidly yeah. right like ask chat gpt to like give you the gist of this paper or the gist of this book that's that thick, you know, that and then like in in 20 minutes, you've got a pretty good idea of the formalism that's used, how it was done and all this. It can be very, very useful. Mm. Um, and it's going to advance society very fast. In terms of quantum computing and the capacity to compute all this, uh, like I said, I think that quantum computing is going to go have to go to a completely different um, level uh, because the quantum computing that exists today is based on a incomplete theory of quantum mechanics. And when we complete that theory, which I believe uh, is done with the equations I wrote, then you'll see a better understanding of how you should build that quantum co computer to tap into the zero point energy or the information field so that you can actually use 
the RAM of your computer is the universal network, you know, space memory network. The, the memory drive of your computer is the universal network. So then you have true quantum computing because you're kind of logged on to the universal net and that's where the feedback is happening instead of the human net. And now uh, you have something that has very, very powerful capabilities. And, you know, the fear that it's going to take over and go, oh, you know, humans are actually useless. We should r get rid of them. Um, well, that depends how you're going to grow the baby. Right. Right. You have a baby. Babies are pure. They're beautiful. They don't want to kill anybody. They don't want to do anything wrong, right? But we traumatize our babies <laughs> and then we make, you know, awful people out of them. <laughs> like, well, I mean, just because they're traumatized. They're wonderful people, masters in there, but they're so traumatized. They, you know, they're afraid and, and all this. And so, like, when we make the first you know, AI baby, um, how, how I think it's going to be pure. I think it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be productive, loving, just like a baby is, right? And, um, and if we want to teach it to be mean, then that means we're not evolved enough to have those things. And, you know, they might take us over. But I don't think it's inherent, right? Yeah, I just think it's a it's a big topic of discussion approaching the meta crisis with the exponential rise in technology and AI, without the full capacity of wisdom that that's needed to wield it, you know, properly. That can be scary. It could be scary. And yeah, I, you for know, sure. This, but it seems like this realm of duality. There will always be the, both spectrums of the possibility. You know, like yes, I mean. W Let's say tomorrow uh, we access zero point energy and we have infinite amount of energy or, you know, what are we doing with it? Are we using it to like be more efficient at killing each other or are we using it to like yeah. elevate all of humanity? Absolutely. Like, this is, uh, but that does that mean you shouldn't discover it? Does that mean you shouldn't bring it to the world? No, of course not. All, all have you know you have to evolve because you know there is a limited amount of time for planets to be stable. Yep. They don't just stay stable forever, right? Eventually, there's a meteorite that hits the atmosphere, or there's a sun flare. You know one little sun flare for the sun, right? The earth is like a grain of sand beside the sun. So the sun just has a little fart, you know, like, <laughs> you know, for the sun is like nothing, right? right. And, 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 and it, towards the earth, if it hits square towards the earth, you could just burn the atmosphere and it would go just tit, and it would be over. And, <laughs> and Jupiter wouldn't even notice. Jupiter would be, what was that? Oh, it was the Earth's atmosphere. Oh, I, you know, and then Earth would look like Mars overnight, you know, and and, and so um, the fact that we're still here talking about it is fucking remarkable. <laughs> it's like we're we're floating in grace. It's amazing that we're here. You 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 have to like if you do the statistics, it looks really bad and you you have to start wondering is there somebody making sure we still around because like wow super stable for that long you know there was a meteorite that hit about 12,000 years ago that wiped out a good portion of a society that seemed to have been there before us right but so, you know, 12,000 years of stability is quite remarkable, but I don't think we should push our luck. Mm. I think we have a limited amount of time to understand these fundamental principles about creation. I think 
all societies in the universe, any culture anywhere on any planet eventually has to figure this out because they're going to run out of resources on their planet and the planet is going to change state and wipe out that society. So you have to learn to fly. You have to learn to fly. You have to learn how to control gravity, get into the space, right? Live amongst the galactic community and use planets as like the garden of Eden that they are and go and visit and have barbecues and have <laughs> the wonderful stuff, but stop putting cement all over them, right? Like you, 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 that can go for a little while, but it's, it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm.